it's got a bit of a soft spot for me, this watch, because when I was 19, I couldn't afford to keep it, sadly, but I really wanted to. And so when the opportunity to, to buy this came up, I couldn't say no. Welcome back to What's On Watches, I'm Thomas Watts and we have another episode of our brand new series, A Moment Of Your Time. Today we have a special guest, Sexy Jesus himself, the man with the phone, it's Alex Stevens. Good to see you Tom. Massive thank you Alex. Pleasure. So Alex, I know you basically as a Cartier connoisseur, but how long have you been in this game? Where did it all start? How did you become the man that knows everything about Cartier? That's very kind of you to say. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Well, I started when I was 14 years old. Um, my dad was a book dealer and collector. So I was brought up going around to the local flea markets, car boot sales, auctions, and um, started buying and selling when I was 14. A bit of everything, nice. anything old that caught my eye. Um, selling on eBay at the time and um, bought and sold a few watches. Okay. Became interested in them, joined a few forums, read a few books, and um, and then around 16, I was fully specialised in vintage watches. Wow. Bought my first Rolex, Datejust, um, and got into some more interesting, you know, Amigas and yep. military watches, um, and um, that was the start of it. You've obviously brought a load of watches for us to have a look at today. Um, why don't we start at the very beginning? What is the most important watch to you that's in here at the moment, which one means the most to you? The one that means the most to me is probably the one on my wrist, okay. which is a Cartier Tank London. So made in the London workshop. Wow. Uh, Cartier split into three different workshops, Paris, New York, and London. And London is known and sort of famed for their pieces um, from the mid-60s to the mid-70s, roughly. They produced by hand um, some really unusual iterations and very forward-thinking designs like the Crash, yeah. Pebble, um, so Dice they Watch. From London, did they? They're all yeah. London watches, wow. well made in London. And um, they had a lot of freedom on their, on their designs. But this is a more traditional Louis Cartier tank, yeah. the, the sort of classic. It's incredible. Um, but it's with, really with cool. London hallmarks on the case and on the clasp, and, and that's the most important. There's thing. a really unique engraving on the back here. Mm. Uh, it says, all my love, P. And there's some nice, is it acorns on that? It is. Um, and this watch came to me through, through a contact of mine who purchased it from the family. Okay. And they bought it on uh, New Bond Street in, oh, wow. I think, 1969 or 70 uh, from New. And it was a, a gift to a loved one. And um, if you see engravings on the back of these London watches from the period, they all have this very uh, particular style, with sometimes with acorns and squirrels and things. So it's quite unique. Uh, so you see quite a few of them with them sort of engravings. A on few. You yeah. obviously they're rare watches, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you see an engraving on the back of a London watch, it's often in that style. So I'm very intrigued to see what's inside that box because I think there's something cool in there. What is that? It's not wristwatch shaped, okay. obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, which is rare for me because I'm nearly solely um, wristwatches. But occasionally something special yeah. comes through in, in pocket watch form where you think, I've, I've got to have that. Especially, yeah. you know, if you're focused on a certain brand. For me at the moment, uh, it's Cartier, as we've talked about. Yep. And um, we've got this very special Oh, steel wow. Cartier pocket watch from the early 1930s with a black sector dial, which is just, you that, just never ever see. That um, is incredible. It's fantastic. It's just the sort of watch when I, when I saw it for the first time, I was sent, sent photos through on WhatsApp as many deals are, yeah. as you well know. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't put my phone down. I just, I had to try and buy it. You know, it's yeah. just, I've never seen a, a, a black sector dial in a steel pocket watch from that period. I'll be honest, I've never seen anything from like this. This is absolutely yeah. incredible. So what, what era did you say this was? It'd be early 1930s. Early so 1930s. 1932 well. or three. And I know like we, we try and remind people that 
box and papers maybe aren't the most important thing, but is that the original <laughs> box I think, that goes with it? To be honest, this pouch looks a little later. The box could be, um, but I wouldn't like to say, and as, as we both know, box and papers it, it does is not important, really. Particularly but... on a 1930s pocket watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? If it's a 90s date, just is different, but yeah. Um, it looks yeah, incredible. It's... That's really clean. So, whilst we're on, you know, we're talking about Cartier, we've got a few more. And, you know, I, I sell anything from a Muster Cartier like this, yeah. which I know you, you guys are fans of as well. It is uh, something we, we have a shared interest when it comes to these sort of watches. I mean, this is, again, a really clean example. I would sell anything from that for, I don't know, £1,800, something yeah. like that, all the way to a, you know, Tank London yeah. original for... 20, 30,000 pounds. That, that's the kind of uh, range I would uh, go in. But the reason that the musts are so popular is they offer access to the iconic model, yeah. but at an affordable price. You know, it's, yeah, absolutely. It's, the, it's the cost of a new tag or whatever. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? exactly. So, You've got that tank shape that is so iconic. Yeah, and then you're, you're in and amongst all the legends who have worn this shape. Yeah. And um, that's why they're, they're so popular now. And, you know, I, I know we both sell them <laughs> fast. Well, as soon as you can get them, you yeah. sell them. It's one of them watches they do sell themselves. I noticed there's a very interesting style of uh, tank behind that. That looks very different. This is a bit wacky. Okay. Very 70s. And probably from a, a period where Cartier was just sort of trying to work yeah. out what they were doing, experimenting a little bit. Um, you see in the 70s other brands using wood, like yep. Zenith that made some wood dial watches. Rolex. Um, Rolex, yeah. exactly. And this is a, a tank uh, in your traditional shape, but with a, a wood dial made from, I think, Rio de, de Palisandre, they call it, type of Brazilian nice. wood, with a wood dial and wood um, sides to the case. Yeah, Very really unusual. Cool. And probably for someone who wants an iconic model, but wants a really fun and wacky oh, yeah, take yeah. on it. It's something completely different. I mean, that is, when you compare it, like you say, when you've got all the variations of the tank from the Mustacati to the Tank Louis, that is so left field. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And made in small numbers, some retailed in New York, some retailed in London, probably around 3,000 pieces in total. So it's a rare watch, but an acquired taste. Yeah. Here, this yes. is a Santos Dumont. Uh, ultra thin, so a very, very thin caliber manual wind yeah. movement in 18 karat gold. Obviously, an iconic model. I could, I could, and I could have this from you, Alex. I'm not going to lie. This is. Arguably... Let's talk afterwards, then. <laughs> so, th this would be before the uh, collection Privé. Okay. It's sort of um, late 80s, early 90s. They made some, some nice pieces um, in gold, manual, with those guilloche dials that you then see later on the yeah. CP watches. Can I get how slim it is? Yeah, it's a great kind of like wedding watch, tuxedo watch. Mm. Yeah. I think this, it, the Santos de Mont is just, it's just one of the most refined pieces. And I think it's, well, I mean, this is just a step up. This is the you know yeah. next level in terms of from a Santos, but, yeah, this quality is, wise, it's, it's, it's yeah, far it's, better. If you think, Paris signed as well, it's just wonderful. Yeah, and the tanks, you know, if you see like a, a 90s quartz tank now, yeah. you could be paying like six, yeah, five yeah, to yeah, six yeah. grand f just for that. So, if you know, that's a cut above quality and watchmaking wise um, and rarity, you know. And yeah. th that is the thing with Cartier at the moment is these watches are rare. Yeah. The musts aren't particularly rare, but to find them in good condition, yeah, is, exactly. Yeah. Um, but if you look at, you know, earlier Cartier, the, the London watches or Paris 50s, 60s, 70s watches, they're rare, you know, watch to watch, they are rare. Yeah. So it makes sense their client. And it's early. all part of that hunt, isn't it? Like you say, trying to find a must in a good condition, you know. Yeah. There's so many out there. You can go out one and buy one immediately, but finding one that's to the standard you want, and it's the same with these, and that's yeah. When you get a piece like that, that's why they are so special. And, and that's rare, our job, you know. That's what yeah, we've got that is what we do. do. We've got that's to find what we're paid for. <laughs> exactly. And that's Very the nice. Fun. Right, so Alex, you've got some, some hidden gems here. Yeah. What have you got in here? Let's have a look. Yeah, I've got a few nice things hiding away. So I think we'll start um, with this, which is... Is that a breguet? It's a breguet. Yeah, nice. And obviously, you know, it's not oh. unbelievably rare. Um, but in this iteration, this particular example is, and it is you may rare. have spotted it by now. <laughs> it is rare. He's really playing this down. This is this is incredibly rare. That is incredible. Wow. 
So go on then, tell the audience why it is so rare. Listen. Tiffany and Co. signed Breguet uh, Classique manual, you know, 30, I think 32 mil or something like that. Very elegant dress watch, but Tiffany and Co. signed, Tiffany and Co. retailed. You do see Breguets with Tiffany and Co., but very, very rarely. A few have come up at auction. Yeah. Um, normally they're at um, six o'clock on, yeah. on a separate plate on the dial, but this one is up sort of uh, on the main plate with, with Breguet. And uh, I haven't seen another example like that. And uh, I bought it here in London. It was in the hands of a private collector for a good 10, 20 years. You know, he probably wow. bought it when um, Tiffany & Co wasn't a thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just a special, special thing. You know, it's the, the kind of thing They're when so you see underrated. it, you have to buy it. Next, um, we're gonna go left field with Okay. Oh, wild, wild and crazy is the word I would use to yeah. describe it. AP? A AP in white gold with diamonds, original set, skeletonized, automatic, um, commissioned by the Sultan of Amman. So, uh, you know, nice. made for the royal family, normally as gifts, state gifts, which is a custom in the Middle East. You, you see that across a lot of countries. And, um, with a with a, a custom Omani Kanjar rotor, which is yeah. just mad. From from a craftsmanship perspective, that is yeah. second to none. And like I say, that rotor is just absolutely incredible. It's one of these pieces <clears throat> you're never gonna you're gonna see one of them realistically in, the likely, entire, yeah. in your entire career. And yeah. I can imagine it's one that you're not gonna part with easily. Obviously, you know the the buyer for that kind of watch is is very specific, but it's the type of thing. When you get someone who appreciates it, you know, it's, it's gonna command a good yeah. good price. Next, back in there for you. we are going to go a personal favorite of mine. Yeah, UFO. UFO, Universal Genève in pink gold, 1955 probably. Uh, they call it Disco Valance, so UFO in Italian and um, I was lost on me for a moment. It's I had no idea what you meant when you said that. <laughs> Disco Valente, maybe. I'm not sure. My Italian's not tip top, but um, UFO case design and, and um, very unique flying saucer design. You, you know, you wear this out, you're never going to see anyone else wearing something like that. Yeah. So yeah. a rare thing and in that condition, very crisp. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the case. Is I love this cool. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Let's go something special. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's. I mean, that's the sort of piece you just um, want to keep hidden away. Yeah, sure. That's okay. why it was in the roll, tucked away. This is one our audience will recognise. This is. Uh, this is what we. <laughs> this is a. Um, yeah, that's just incredible. As you can tell, I'm actually speechless. That is. Uh, well, you, you didn't know I was going to pull it out. I did so. not expect you to pull yeah. that out. I mean, we've gone from Universal Genève to probably a Grail watch for about ninety yeah. percent of people. I mean, this is incredible. It is a Grail watch. Also, it's, it, well, for the viewers. So it's a, it's a 6265 Daytona, well, Oyster Cosmograph, not Daytona on the dial, because it's Mark I. They didn't have okay. Daytona on the dial, which is quite nice for the purist. Uh, around 1970, 71, um, Mark I, 6265. And um, it's, it's got a bit of a soft spot for me, this watch, because when I was 19, I, I owned one very similar and I was halves in with a mentor okay. and um, I couldn't afford to keep it sadly but I really wanted to enjoy enjoy the watch for a bit and we sold it and back then those watches were worth, that was maybe seven or eight years ago, those watches were worth 20, 25,000 yeah. pounds. Obviously now it's far more and so when the opportunity to, to buy this came up I couldn't say no. In the UK, to get the opportunity to buy a, a nice untouched 6265 from a private individual. You bought this end user? Yeah, it wow. doesn't come up often, so. Yeah, um, well the only time you ever see these realistically is it, traded within circles. That is, yeah. you know, it comes from one collector to another collector to another collector. To buy this from a private customer mm. is incredibly rare. Right then, mm. we have got some weird and wonderful pieces in here which I'm very intrigued to see. So uh, yeah, talk to me about this one. We'll start with this. This is, oh, it's an Amiga. It's oh, cool. an Amiga. It's just come in, to be honest. Um, okay. Last week, it's in 18 karat, yep. gem set with 
rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and diamonds. Yeah. Kind of a, a tutti frutti vibe, yeah. uh, as they would say, um, with a kind of, uh, yeah, very unusual bracelet design. Um, a watch I've never seen before. Sometimes, which is part of the fun, yeah. something comes in and you don't really know too much about it, but you know it's special. And that's obviously what the eye is all about. Well, that's how we get better, isn't it? And um, if, so, if you don't know to learn. And I don't tend to sell ladies' watches unless there's something really special like that. Mm -hmm. And um, the the next piece now this is cool. Is kind of in the same vein as that. Yeah. Jewelry piece um, in 18 karat gold with this kind of bark finish. I'm guessing you pull this and it pops out the dark. Yeah. It's kind of concealed. That's cool. Concealed dark. And the interesting thing about this one is. It was designed by Gilbert Albert, who okay. was uh, a famous uh, designer who later went on to work for Patek, designed the Patek Asymmetric, among some other oh. important watches, but um, worked for Amiga and designed a, a range of, uh, of, of gold bracelets. I mean, that is so watches. refined, isn't it? That is just, that yeah. is incredible. It's, it's, you know, you wouldn't know it's a watch. If yeah. you saw it on a on a lady's wrist, you wouldn't know it's a watch, and that's the fun of it. Can I guess the age on this? Yeah, please. Do you know what the age is? Circa. Circa. <laughs> Circa. I'm... 60s or 70s? 70s. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing because it says the OM Swiss made on the dial, that's what gave it away. Probably early, early 70s. Yeah. Um, we could order an archive if Amiga still did them, but... Well, that's not to talk about. I'm going to say, yeah, don't do that because they'll just tell you that it's worth three million, three million pounds. And... <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Um, now, what is in the plastic container? Because I'm guessing this is fresh in. Fresh in? Yeah. It's been with my watchmaker, just having a little TLC. But I, I've ordered a strap for it. I hoped it was going to arrive in time for this video, <sighs> but it hasn't. Um, I feel honored. And it's a wow. Piaget tank hobnail case retailed by Asprey and with a lapis lazuli dial. So it's actual lapis. Really? That's a lapis style motif. Real thinly cut lapis lazuli stone, yeah. And free of cracks, very nice. The hobnail on that is absolutely fantastic. They've been underappreciated for a long time. Piaget yeah. as a brand, probably similar to Cartier were yes. prior to yeah. a few years ago. Do you think we'll see the same thing with Piaget or do you think it'll be a bit more of a plateau? I or? think you're seeing it already okay. to a certain degree, but not the same level as Cartier. Cartier is like an, an explosion. Really. Yeah. Piaget is still becoming appreciated, but it's not mainstream. Mm. So we're saving the best till last, in my opinion. Uh, let's Final have a look watch. at this one. This is a uh, this is the Alex Stevens special. We're gonna try and start calling yeah. it that. But you are the next Buckley, my... and this dial is going to be the one that gets you to that level. If people follow me on Instagram or whatever, um, they've seen my wrist shots. I use a houndstooth coat, yeah. and, and that's become kind of my my brand, as it were. And our followers will know the houndstooth coat because that's what inspired Josh's houndstooth coat. The, uh... Copied me. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, he's seething, take that back. He's <laughs> it's a different pattern and colours, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, basically, it became my, my kind of branding when I went solo, and um, I designed my packaging around it and uh, my, my graphics and things. So, Rolex in the 80s and 90s produced these houndstooth dials. You see them with diamonds and without. This one's with diamonds uh, from the, I suppose, late 80s. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a wacky thing. Yeah. You know, it's not something you'd see. And obviously I feel like I should own one. You need to get the Alex Stevens dial trending and you know, every photo you should be wearing this and that jacket. Maybe we, you can give me a hand with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And like I say, very on brand, very cool. Exactly. That's and I think, that's a, uh, I think that's a very, very nice watch to wrap this up on. Super, it's been great fun. Yeah, so Alex, if the audience wants to find you, where do they need to go? Where do they need to look? They would need to go to Instagram, at Alex Stevens Vintage. That's my main sort of outlet. Lots of fresh pieces there, bit behind the scenes. And um, my website, alexstevensvintage.com. That's the shop yeah. you can purchase. Instagram for the for the new arrivals and yeah, um, nice. stories and yeah. So I have a look at Alex Stevens. <laughs> I'll check out what's on watches.co.uk. But Alex, a massive thank it's you a for uh, filming with us today. Thanks for coming down. Um, should we go for lunch? 
Sounds good. Nice. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon.